go ahead. So. Yeah. so I want to start asking you the same question I asked Caitlin. To you, this, I mean, to me, this feels like a number one contender fight. To you, does it feel the same? I mean, it's got to. We're on the same card as the as the championship, right? It would seem only fair. You know, Caitlin was, when I left to come up to uh, Bantamweight, you know, she was the girl at Flyweight that everyone, you know, knew about most. So, yeah, I, I do believe so. How does it feel to be back in uh, Toronto? I know you were here when you were younger. Uh, does it feel, it obviously feels a bit different this time for business. Yeah, I think the last time I was here was like I when my 19th or 20th birthday, and I did the whole like, hey, let's go to Canada and drink because I'm from Cleveland. So it's only a couple hour drive away. She's gonna come say hi to all you guys, so feel free to say hello. Oh, yeah. she's I was worried. Social butterfly. No, she's fine. It's really fun watching you fight because it looks like you like being in there. That's where you want to be. Yeah, you know, um, I, I feel more comfortable now. Um, I don't know if it's just, you know, it's came with age or it's come with the weight class, you know. I, I should have never been a Bantamweight, and I feel like everyone's judging me based upon my Bantamweight years and then, you know, forget that I did a lot of really great things in the years that women's MMA was pretty much nothing before the Gina Caranos, you know, when when there was Debbie Purcell and there was myself who, you know, were the, the front runners for really women's MMA. And, you know, being one of the first females to fight in Ohio, and let alone even in, you know, the United States, like... I'm kind of I'm kind of utilizing the underdog thing, you know, the underrated thing. So, I mean, I've enjoyed being in there at 25. The weight cuts make me hungrier, makes me, um, you know, want to prove something to myself. You know, that all of this dieting, all of this regular training, is it means something. It's it, there's tons of challenges to trying to become a professional fighter. When you started fighting, it was ten times harder for women. Yo, yeah. I mean, you know, when you go into a gym. You know, they're like, wait a minute, what does this chick want? Why is she here? Like, this is like, you know, this is Sausage Fest Central. You know what I mean? Like, we don't want a chick in here. Like, this is where we get to go be men, talk like men, you know, do that. And then, you know, you get a female that comes in there. It's like, listen, like, I'm not here because of you. I'm here because of me and because of what I want to do. So I was very fortunate at the early years of when I decided to do this that a Team Strong Style really just opened the doors and we're like, hey, you know what, this this chick has really got some skill and, you know, she's got an amazing backstory and we want to help her utilize, you know, the, the negative things that happen and turn them into a positive. And why did you want to fight in an environment that was that prohibitive to fight in for you? Um, you know, it comes from a childhood. You know, I've never really spoke a lot about it. I think there's been some, you know, lots of controversy people have heard about, you know, me and my father. Um, you know, I. I was raised in a very abusive household. Um, my dad uh, was an old school tradesman, so he was a very, very tough man. And he got kind of thrown into fatherhood in a way that I don't think he was really quite ready for. Um, and then you get a, you know, a female just like him who's very strong-minded and very tough. And it was definitely a challenge. A challenge. And when I left home at 18, um, you know, I found strong sound. I found fighting and was still kind of mixed up at that time in life. You know, I enrolled myself in college because I thought it was the right thing to do. Um, in all reality, it, it wasn't what I wanted. I was just trying to find myself so that when I found fighting, it was like a way to express myself. And I've, you know, grown up and found those challenges even through my 20s. It's like, you don't really understand how important your 20s are. Then you get in your 30s and you're like, oh, it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's why it all happened. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Caitlin said she's been selected as the official standby should Valentina or Joanna be, able, be unable to compete for whatever reason. Do you know if you're in the running for that? Uh, how much do you know about that situation? I mean, what am I supposed to do? Hope for it and it not happen and then be disappointed? I mean, I went after my last fight and I went and renegotiated my own contract manager list. I asked Dana right away. I had a, a great meeting with him and I said, first thing I said to him is I want the next title shot. He goes, I can't do that, Jess. I'm like, why? You do it all the time. Why not? Um, so I knew then, you know, that I wasn't going to get it. So, I mean, it's worth asking for. I know that everyone always says, like, oh, you're only as good as your last fight. Then if, if that's the case, I've won both my last two fights. Why am I still being held to the same standards of when I lost at Bantamweight? And not to mention, I took all of those girls to decisions. And I didn't fight to the level I'm fighting at now because I didn't trust myself. So if I could, you know, go back and redo it, I think I could win those fights. And, I mean, look. If I don't get the title shot the next time, then we just keep going. You know, we just keep chipping away. We beat all the girls they put in front of us. And then, then what can you say when you win? What, what did you think of Joanna getting the next title shot without having to compete at Flyweight? I think it's a terrible, I think it's terrible for our weight class. I think that those kinds of fights are what, you know, maybe the, I don't even know that the fans really care to see, but it just, it, it mixes up the division. Like, if you want these divisions to have 
true stances and, and you want to go to like, oh, this is the world title or this is, you know, a, a, a I don't know, stable um, weight class, then you can't be mixing people up. You know, I, I think that it wouldn't be what I wanted to do. So, I mean, did no. You, did you feel like she should have had to fight at least once at 125? Is that what I mean, didn't she lose her last fight? How does that happen? Well, she, right? beat, she, she, fights, she, she beat she, Atisha Torres, but the, the, she oh, lost okay. two before that to Rose, obviously. Okay, I mean, again, you know, like, I, I think that, I don't think it was fair, but, I mean, who am I? I mean, I can't, I'm just another, you know, flyweight in the division. I don't have any say-so. Just have to go out there and win fights, and then there's not really much to be said. You okay. talked I mean, about you your beginnings in the sport, you know, being in the sport for a long time, being one of the pioneers to, you know, sort of put your name out there. Do you feel like your experience will play a factor in this fight, just with the level of competition you fought and just everything you've been through in your career? Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't know what Kahujigan's been through, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I mean, I can only think that, you know, and only believe that I am fully prepared and all levels and the experience level, even just, you know, having so many UFC fights, being in a position where, you know, I was close to a title fight, just like when I fought Misha, I remember being at the Misha fight and being like, you know what, like, I'm so excited to be here, like, I'm going to get the next title shot, like, I'm going to beat her, and then we're winning the whole first round, we're just yeah. smoking Misha in that first four, just showing them, like, how good my hands are, and then I remember stopping in that fight, and I was like, when my, I was a little bit, my back was close to the cage, I'm like, alright, I'm going to show my wrestling, how much I've been working on it, and I stopped, and I started thinking instead of doing, and she cracked me, yeah. put my butt on the canvas, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, that's never happened. Um, so I think the last time compared to this time is that I was happy just to be in, you know, considered for something. Like, I, I'm not setting myself up for failure. I'm setting myself up for success, and I'm looking at just the task at hand right now. Let's get through this fight, and let's, you know, let's, let's re like negotiate and think about things afterwards. Caitlin's, Jessica, you're the uh, biggest. Got the longest reach in the division, the tallest. But fighting up a bantamweight kind of prepped you for these tall fights. I mean, yeah, I, I fought Leslie Smith. Leslie Smith was the same size as her. I cracked her ear off. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, I don't know if you ever met my, my boxing coach. Um, he's back there if you need to take a look at him. He's six foot tall. So, um, and a longer reach than her. So, believe me, we are very well prepared um, when it comes to that. And again, we've seen people um, have longer reaches and not realize how to use them. So, again, you know, I, I try not to play too much into that, you know. Um, I don't know. I just again, it goes back to like mechanics, right? Her, her, her reach might be longer because my back is bigger. You know what I mean? Like so, there's a lot of things that go into it. So I don't really pay that much attention to it. For, for so you were the biggest advocate for this division for for years, even before it existed in the UFC. Uh, it's been here now for about a year, and it seems like it kind of struggled to get going with Nico. I'm just curious for your opinion. Why? What does it feel like it take, has taken so long to maybe net, latch on? They chose the wrong girls to represent it. I mean, Dana and Sean will go back and tell you how many times, like, I've begged for it. I've begged for flyweight, you know, and even when I was at Bantamweight, like, I did things different that I probably shouldn't have. You know, I put on bad weight. I wasn't my normal, like, athletic self, like I wanted to be bigger in size because I was a little nervous about, you know, some of those girls. I grappled Misha and I keep bringing her in because she's really an incredible person um, and I've, I've gotten the chance to speak with her and compete with her, but we did a submission uh, grappling match and I came in like trying my hardest to be at like 145 and she was 162 a week after fighting Raquel and that was like my true like, wow, you know, like that's the difference in the weight classes of the girls that even if I tried to walk around at 145 to even cut down there like it the the size was there you know what I mean like if you if I gave you a choice you want me to drop a five pound kettlebell on your foot or a one pound right you're going to choose the one pound but there's weight differences for a reason so um and I remember grappling in that match with her and her and Fallis um, were like, man, you did an incredible job. Like, we didn't realize how good your grappling was. Just stay the task at hand. You're going to get flyweight. It's going to eventually happen. And, you know, I, I really held on to those words and truly believed that eventually they were going to come there. So after my cancel fight with Aspen, I literally begged Dana and Sean in the back of that, uh, in the back. And I was like, please, just give me a chance. Like, let me show you who I am at this division. And I think I've held to my word, and I, I plan to keep doing that. I know for a long time when you were saying that, those sorts of things, that this isn't my division, that a lot of people kind of just told you there was excuses, but now that you're here and you're being so successful, do you feel vindicated? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I got cut from the B word about <laughs> six years ago, um, and that's when, you know, the you know the UFC kind of brought me up. So on Saturday will be six years from the last time I got my submission victory, and that was a standing arm triangle in 58 seconds. So. Um, I'm kind of excited to 
relive that, you know, and that was my um, my chance at stardom and my chance at like uh, changing my life. And that's how I'm treating this weekend is life changing and a chance to show you guys and show myself, right? Like I am who I say I am because I say so, not because of what other people think. So. Awesome. Bye. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you.